Okay, good morning and welcome to Moncase on Mondays. Today I'm joined by Paul Tilley. Um, Paul works for University Sport in Portsmouth University. So uh, good morning, Paul. How are you today? Morning, Dave. Yeah, really well. Thanks. You're looking well yourself? Yeah, doing all right, actually. I think the sun has made a massive difference to all of us during lockdown. I think had it been bad yeah. weather, I think we'll be feeling very differently. Um, yeah, keeping active. So what are you up to to stay active at the moment, Paul? I know you're a cyclist, aren't you? Um, I, well, um, I'm, a, I'm a, a not brilliant cyclist, but I try and get out. But I'm very lucky. I live, I live in a really nice place, right by the sea, the sea in Portsmouth. And um, I've been doing a bit more cycling, a bit more running. But probably the main thing I've been doing is actually getting out and running on the beach. Um, Portsmouth's an island, and actually you can do a really nice loop. You hug the whole coast around the island, and so um, at least once a week I'll cycle around the entire island or run around the island. So it's been a really nice, um, nice to sort of get back out to, um, uh, to sort of nature, really. So that's what I've been doing. Yeah. It's, sort of, it's been a nice sort of um, nice rather than just running back and forward to work. Mm -hmm. No, excellent. That's that's really good. And you're right. That word luck is really interesting. I actually don't believe in luck, but you know, I look out my window in the countryside and it's stunning. And, you know, had I lived on the 73rd floor of a, a, a block of flats, I think I'd probably feel very different as I do now. So the, the university sport provision is, is very impressive down there in Portsmouth. What was it like getting the message on, I think it was March the 24th, to lock down? What did, what did you go through? How did you manage all of that process? Um... I think for most people it's just that it's surreal it just doesn't seem seem real like it's happening and um i think for, for the hardest thing or the hardest thing for staff is to really get over that message that this is happening and we need to accept that this is going to stop and um and i think we were lucky because we had this we had we were being driven by the university senior management team and um and they were really you know sort of driving any decision for us so the decision was taken out of our hands um but once it was made it was really um, I think our staff reacted brilliantly um, mm -hmm. under what is quite a lot of stress, pressure, and uncertainty, um, and communicating that out to our to our students, to our members, to our users. Um, and I think the sort of benefit to us has been that there was a real um, understanding from people that this was serious and that the right messages yeah. were going out. So um, when we did it, it, um, it took a good couple of days to sink in that this was actually happening. But um, we, we managed to sort of transition fairly well. And so the university was brilliant in terms of setting up remote working, um, in terms of being flexible. And I think a lot of the things that the university did well around making, um, making really quick, decisive decisions about how to do things. Um, and that's what people want in, in, a, in a sort of crisis, um, is that people to, to make decisions rather than dillying on, you know, and sitting on the fence. Um, yeah. And, and that was what they did, and um, and we sort of moved into that kind of remote working um, uh, function very quickly. Right. Okay. And as a university, you're pretty good at attracting um, students from foreign countries from different parts of the world. Did did it, did you find the lockdown was extended a little bit because of those people who were maybe a long way from home on, uh, and were staying on campus, etc., or close to campus? Yeah. So, so so there's still some international students who are still on campus right. at the moment. Um, right. those that just haven't been able to get home um, mm. and uh, the university has done an amazing job to support those students and I think right. even, even running to a couple of weeks ago you were talking into sort of like the thousands of, stu of some student right. groups still in the city and on campus um, mm. and you know the, the university departments have stepped up the welfare the well-being yeah. um, the, the halls of residences the catering um, mm -hmm. So they've done a lot to really support those students who are still in the city. Um, yeah. And I know that's the same thing across most universities across the country. Um, but there are some students who've actually decided they would prefer to stay in the UK. Right. For OK. For reasons. Um, mm -hmm. And there's actually, um, there's actually some, some, some home UK students who are staying in Hall's residences. that They'd prefer to stay there than go home with their parents for lockdown. Right. Mm. Yeah, I think, I think I'd struggle to go back to my parents, if I'm honest. But that's yeah. another story. Um, the, and, and to add to all of this mix, you're building a fifty-three million pound sport leisure facility at the moment. How's that going? Is it still is it still under construction? It is, yeah. I mean, I think we um at the very at that very initial part of lockdown, there was about two or three days where the site just shut, just while they were mm -hmm. reviewing the guidance and the guidelines. But for us, the lucky, uh, well, not lucky, I'm not use the word luck, but the um uh, the, the element of the government lockdown is construction's been able to continue. Yeah. 
Yeah. So uh, the, the site, once it had um, made the necessary changes to um, the sort of uh, risk assessments and, and site safety, they're able to continue work. Um, and at the moment, we're, we're sort of not predicting a huge amount of delays. That may right. come further. There may be some knock-on delays when you start looking at materials, um, mm. that's a lie coming from abroad. Um, yeah. At the moment, it's um, it's coming along quite well. Okay, that's really good news. So, what do you get for fifty-three million quid then? <laughs> um, you get something. You get a very nice, um, shiny, Bream outstanding facility. Um, right. No, what we're getting is a fantastic asset for the university. Yeah. It's it is a lot of money. But I think the university's taken the decision that actually we're building um, a very innovative, um, sustainable building um, in a conservation area. And so it has right. to be of our significance. It was never going mm -hmm. to be um, your standard um, sports facility. Um, and I think the university really wanted to, this is the first building of a, of a major master plan. And they really wanted to ensure that this building um, was a statement of the university's intention about what we wanted to build and that we were committed to um, architectural and sustainable excellence and that's mm -hmm. what we're going to get for it and I think you will see a building that will be um, that will be admired across the sector and used as a blueprint for how other people would like to build um, a sports facility. Mm. No that's excellent I've, I've had the, the pleasure of seeing some of the plans that you've got and I think It'll just be a wonderful addition to what you guys do and really allow you to spread the wings of your department as to what you can achieve and, and the participation and the sporting and the elite side of stuff that you're going to be able to do in the future will just be fantastic. So, yeah, I, um, I think it, if, if anybody watching this wants to have a look, it's definitely worth a view at the minute. You've got some really good time lapse videos, actually. I saw some of the concrete being poured for the pool the other day and things like that. Yeah, there's lots of good time lapse videos and, and marketing materials um, uh, to, to have a look at the designs and the layouts. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, we we really built this this facility to to have an impact on our entire community. Um, you know, it's, it's not just an elite facility or a, mm -hmm. or a sort of beginners. It's it's really focused on attracting as many people as possible to it. And um, I've absolutely no doubt that we've we've put the time in the feasibility work. The planning yeah. um, to really make sure that we've listened to what our student body and the wider community wants um, mm. and hopefully we're going to deliver in about a year's time okay. um, an amazing um, asset for the university and the local community. Okay it, I, I'm doing a piece of work at the minute some consultation for a local authority who's looking to build a new site and I got a bit of feedback that said because of Covid what somebody would really like to happen is the ability to almost have production studio within the group exercise so that the classes can be beamed to the community so that they can use that whole digital transformation that we've had still get their physical activity but not have the issues of travel and all of those types of things that you get with group exercise is, has there been anything that you've seen or read that would make you think i need to think about something perhaps differently in this building because of covid um to be honest, no. I think we, what we've done in terms of um, in, in terms of design is we hopefully have, have made it flexible enough and mm. future proof it so that we can actually adapt it dependent on changes in um, you know in sort of you know whatever might be in the, important in the market at the moment. The mm. space is a very flexible. We've got we've invested a lot of money in things like AV and right. um, our sound and lighting systems. So that actually we can we can run multiple things from from one one or two spaces. Um, there's a lot of social spaces around the building which have got a lot of um, AV solutions around there, power and data. So I think that um, a really good example of where we might want to do more digital um, yeah. digital streaming. I think that what we've got in there will, will be suitable for that. And um, some of the things that we have done that actually pre this, um, pre, pre COVID, long, long time ago, we made decisions around things like changing areas. And okay. um, we, we've not followed Sport England guidance at all for changing areas. Okay. Um, we looked at our demographic and we looked at um, how they wanted to access the facility. And for a lot of those students, they just, they'll turn up in their kit, mm. they'll exercise and they'll go home. And so there wasn't that need for us to invest in large changing areas. And I know one of the things from COVID is that um, changing areas are likely to be closed or people are less likely to want to use changing areas. So the fact mm -hmm. that we've actually got smaller changing areas um, isn't going to have a, a negative impact on us at all. 
So there's some yeah. things that we've already done that actually I think um, uh, will be benefit will benefit us in the wake of the COVID impact. Yeah. Good, excellent. And you talked earlier about the fact that um, the you know, construction has done some really interesting work around learning development around COVID. There's some very good stuff out there. What? How are you thinking now about reopening? What's the planning process? What are you putting in place so that you're ready to reopen whenever we get permission? Um, are you talking about the new facility or our current facility? No, the existing facilities, Paul, the existing. Yeah, so we're... Um, the challenge for us compared to maybe some um, some standalone leisure operators or private sports facilities, gyms and the like, is that they're kind of just thinking about that that one part of their business. Whereas at a university, the university is looking at opening, it's looking at lecture theatres, it's looking at halls of residences, it's looking at the library, it's looking at multiple different fun, um, aspects of the business. And so we're just part of that. And so yeah. for us, um, we're... We're, we're sort of looking at, we're going to be ready and, and able as much as we can when we are asked to open, but we're very much waiting to be guided by the university. Right. Um, but we're doing a lot of pre-work at the moment, looking at planning and following UK active frameworks. Um, we've, we've been on a lot of webinars. Um, people like Craig Campbell's been running some great stuff yeah. about reopening. Yeah. Um, and at a national level, um, we're working with Bucks, who are the National um, British University and College of Sport, who represent um, university and college sport. We've been working at a national level to look at and understand our approach and how we're going to react to reopening. Um, and I, I think for us, because we're not we're not in a rush to reopen as a university, our students pretty much are finished by the time it gets to June. So we mm -hmm. don't really need to reopen until September. Sure. And so for us, we're probably in a in a in a strong position, stronger position where we can we can afford to sit back and wait and learn from others. Um, mm -hmm. And it may be that other people in the sector who are rushing back to get open, um, you know, we can learn from any t potential mistakes um, that they make. Um, so it could it could be a benefit to us um, that we we're, yeah. we're not in a rush to reopen. Yeah, no, that's really quite interesting because I, I, I guess the team want to reopen. But at the same time, they, they need to be as confident as your customers that this is right, that it's healthy, it's safe, and and within that bigger strategy that you talked about in the university, are you, are you you've done some really good output from the team. So, what sort of things have you shared with your customers that you, the team are up to? Some some great exercise programs I've seen. Yeah, I mean, from my um, from my perspective, the team has been phenomenal in their response to this. I think that we've really um, it's been a really good opportunity for us to to really empower our staff and to, um, and to let them be innovative and to really um, let them be flexible and come up with their own ideas. And we just said, look, you go away and come up with what you think we should be doing. Um, and between our fitness team and our marketing team, um, the kind of information they're putting out there is absolutely phenomenal. And we don't have a massive team. We don't have a huge budget. And they've done this yeah. really um really from sort of a, a, a you know very much a, a no budget at all but our, our fitness offer we've got um we've got live streaming every day um we've had about 150,000 views of our videos on social media some of the some of the analytics we've got we've, we've got about 37 different countries that have viewed our okay. social media um and that's really important for us as we uh, you know as we as a university we are and you know a global university and we have a lot of international students and so it's great that we know that people are watching these from new zealand um, for instance yeah. um and i think general feedback from our um from our university community has been how much they value this and sport and it goes across the whole country in the sector yeah. and I think we know we've always known that sport is able to do things that other things can't do it creates a community common goal um and some of the communities we've created um through our um, facebook groups and through our um, linkedin groups and the like um you know the feedback we've had from from people has been amazing that we've really helped them feel connected we've helped with their yeah. mental health um we've helped them feel part of something and I think as we move forward now, this is where we want to capitalise on this. Yeah. And how do we how do we build on this whole community and this kind of human the human aspect of, of the benefits of sport? And it's not just yeah. about buildings or or elite sport. It is about creating a community hub where people 
genuinely want to engage with each other and and show and show yeah. that empathy. And so that's, uh, no, that's the Paul, I think that's the opportunity a, for a really interesting word to finish on there is empathy, and we're going to have to finish because we're at fifteen minutes. Um, I, I just that piece around empathy, I think, is really really important. I, I need to say thank you so much for your time, Paul. Really good to talk. You. Keep yourself safe, keep the family safe, and we'll catch up soon, mate. All right, take care. Tell you what. Bye.